Hey, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Matthew Nicely. I am the Deep Learning Compiler PM at NVIDIA. And today I'll go over you know, ways to target the NVIDIA Tensor course. I'm going to start by covering Cutlass. I'll give you some background and overview why you may use it, some of the latest and upcoming features. And then I'll give an overview of OpenAI Triton. If you were just at the last session, you're good. <laughs> Okay, uh, Cutlass is our header-only open source library for programming tensor cores on GitHub. It was initially released in 2017 as a way to improve the programmability of the Volta tensor core, and since then, adoption has grown pretty significantly. Uh, it's transitioned from a research tool for DL practitioners to more of a production asset that you'll find throughout the ecosystem. Cutlass consists of building blocks that allow you to, whether you need to use a gem, a convolution, off the shelf, or if you want to design a, a kernel specifically for your use case. We support numerous epilogues uh, and all of the data and compute types that you'll find on NVIDIA GPUs. We recently released a Python interface. I'll cover that in just a second. And we also have a profiler, which you can use to find the best configuration for your use case. Cutlass is critical to the NVIDIA, NVIDIA ecosystem. You'll find it in many libraries, such as Kublas, Kusparse, Kutensor, Kudinin, and Dali, and, and others. So how, how does it work? Cutlass is made up of a five abstraction layers that the intent is to maximize flexibility. Uh, the first thing is we released version three a few months ago, and that has a new backend called Qt. Qt greatly simplifies the thread to data mapping uh, and allows the kernel developer to focus on the logical descriptions of the tensors and algorithms. So you know, breaking down these abstraction layers, at the bottom you have your atom, which contains the PTX uh, instructions. The tiled MMA and copy will have copy and math operations. The collective layer, that is where you will write a SOL pipeline main loop, which you will find in a gem. Next, you have the kernel layer. Here, you can combine a collective uh, main loop with custom collective epilogues and prologues. Finally, at the device layer, that's where you'll find your kernel configurations, your launch utilities, and the device layer uh, guarantees portability today. Why would you want to use Cutlass? It's probably the most common question that I'm asked. Let's look at it from a gem point of view. Uh, Kublas is going to have the best out-of-box experience. It's going to have quicker time to market. It uh, has uh, portability guarantees across architectures. It has a set of heuristics that will choose an optimal kernel based on your parameters. So what I tell a lot of customers is, if Kublas satisfies your needs, use it and move on. You know? uh, if you need maximum flexibility, if you need something like a custom epilogue which doesn't exist in Kublas today, then you, you go to Cutlass. It takes a little longer to get things up and running, but you have maximum control, full control over data movement and operations. Where might you find Cutlass in the PyTorch ecosystem? At a high level, you'll find some dense and sparse operations in eager mode. There's a PR right now to add uh, Cutlass as an alternative backend to Inductor. Uh, AI template uses a handful of features from every layer. Uh, in its development. Xformer's memory efficient attention is developed on Cutlass. And then finally, the uh, PyTorch Geometric was one of the early adopters of our group gem functionality. I mentioned Python interface earlier. One of the biggest uh, pain points of Cutlass is the C++ templates. With our Python interface, we greatly reduce the defaults required to get started. If you look on the left, here's an example of a basic gem, and you can see it's probably a third of the uh, uh, parameters required uh, to get started. So it's, it's very Pythonic-like and kind of takes a lot of the, the guesswork out of things. Uh, another goal of the Python interface is to improve integration with DL frameworks like PyTorch. So that can be done with the new Cutlass Emit PyTorch method. On the right, you'll see where one can declare a grouped gem with the PyTorch Py, group gem with the Python interface and emit a PyTorch CUDA extension. Under the hood, we'll take care of generating the source code, uh, 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 
doing the inputs for the uh, PyTorch extension and we'll provide a script to generate that PyTorch extension. Our newest feature in Cutlist is what we call an epilogue visitor tree. This is going to allow users to develop uh, complex epilogues using basic epilogue units. It's a set of small computation load and st store operations which allow you to generate common or custom epilogues. It's available today on Ampere and Hopper architectures and, and through the C++ and Python interfaces. So that's performance. Uh, so the out-of-the-box experience with our off-the-shelf kernels are, are pretty good at utilizing uh, peak of the hardware. Here's an example using the profiler and the default parameters uh, with the latest version of Cutlass 3.2 and the latest version of the CUDA Toolkit 12.2 on an H100. And you can see for all these use cases, we're roughly 90% uh, peak utilization. We try to ensure there's also no performance cliffs and we will periodically release optimizations um, as they occur. <coughs> Moving on the roadmap, uh, our next release is 3.3, uh, excuse me, later this month. Uh, the biggest feature in 3.3 is what we're calling mixed input gems. Uh, it's been a common request and what it allows you to do is have different data types for your A and B matrices. So for example, A could be FP16, B could be N8, and during the gym, we will do an upcast to BF16, and you're good to go. We also have improvements to our lower alignment gyms, performance-wise. Then in December of this year, we will have grouped gym and pointer array gym, along with forward prop uh, convolutions that have been optimized for Hopper. Early next year, we'll have FP8 support for ADA, We'll have the W and D grad uh, optimizations for convolutions, uh, sparsity support, and a new feature called portable pipelines. Portable pipelines is what we're going to suggest uh, for users who want portability moving forward in architectures. There will be more on this feature at the GTC talk. And then finally, in Q2 of next year, a common request for Cutlass developers and, and newcomers is documentation. Uh, I've asked for a complete refresh, and this will cover the C++ and Python interfaces. Uh, OpenAI Triton, it's an exciting new uh, Python-like programming language uh, for users to develop kernels in Python and target NVIDIA Tensor Cores. In turn, it allows the developers to focus on the higher level uh, logic. OpenAI Triton comp compiler takes care of a lot of the performance optimizations, uh, leaving fewer knob, uh, excuse me, fewer control knobs for the developer to worry about. It also handles any hardware specifics, so you don't need to worry about whether you're writing on an Ampere GPU or, or a Hopper GPU. Everything's taken care of under the hood. Uh, NVIDIA and OpenAI have been working closely over the past year uh, to enable and improve support on NVIDIA GPUs, and we're happy to announce that two months ago we released the initial Hopper support. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, please find me outside. If you have any questions or feedback, positive, negative, I don't care. I'd love to know your experience. Uh, yeah, thank you.